All right, welcome back to the Make or Break shop. This week we're taking a look at the Sparkmaker Laser Pro. We're gonna see how this stacks up with a lot of the other cheaper laser diodes that are out there. So this actually started out as a Kickstarter project and it actually wrapped up at the beginning of May in 2021, but now it is on Indiegogo where you guys can order it. So to start out, I actually wanna compare this against this guy, which is the, it's moving on me, or, or tour, Laser Master Engraver 2. I did a full review of this guy, it's actually right up there. And this has been my pick for folks who want to get into doing laser stuff, but they don't have a ton of money to spend. So this is a few hundred bucks. What's nice about it is just the work area is massive. So this is actually bigger than some of the uh, cheaper CO2 lasers. And because it's a diode laser, so that is the laser head, which is right here, it's just a lot easier to work with. So you don't have to worry about cooling or glass laser tubes like you do with a CO2 laser. But where I kind of see this guy, let me put them all together. Ugh. And I think in videos before people have commented on it being a mess in my shop and it definitely is. So kind of how I see this guy is more or less this unit with a lot of the upgrades that folks like to make after they buy it. It is a smaller work area. The work area is right here, but you still get a pretty good amount of room to work with. It easily can fit just like a normal sheet of paper. And then also a lot of people use these for doing like cutting boards and you can definitely fit kind of your traditional size cutting board in there to engrave as well as doing some signs and some light cutting. But let's talk about some of the things that this has that this doesn't. So obviously right off the bat, uh, you've got this entire uh, kind of Z axis this is going on with it uh, that this one doesn't have. So um, the gantry is right here, the gantry and this is right here, but this is just a mount for a camera. Um, this actually lets you be able to see what you're gonna work with and you're gonna see it on the computer here in a second. It's not like the highest resolution or the highest accuracy, but you do get a pretty good idea of what you're about to engrave and like where it's actually gonna go on your material. Now, another thing this guy has is actually autofocus. And I haven't seen autofocus on any diode lasers. Those are usually on the bigger CO2 lasers, like on the Glowforge, as well as the full spectrum. It can not only get the right focus, which for lasers is super important because that's gonna give you the best quality cut as well as the best resolution when you're trying to engrave like a picture. But also when you have something slanted, this thing is going to move at an angle, so like cups or whatever, you're gonna be able to engrave and keep the focus the whole time. Now, in terms of the actual laser itself, these are about the same. So this has a seven watt, but you can also get an upgraded unit that has a 10 watt that actually uses two of the diode laser beams, combines those together to give you more output going through. Um, but with diodes in general, you're probably not gonna be cutting a lot of stuff. Most of the time you're gonna be doing engraving. This guy actually has thicker belts. So these guys are a little bit thicker than what you've got over here. And then also you've got linear rails going along your Y axis. Now having the linear rails probably doesn't make a huge difference because unlike a CNC router, where the rigidity of the entire machine makes a massive difference on how well you can do something, but the laser doesn't really push up against anything but air, so it's usually fine. But knowing that this is more rigid and you're gonna have a little bit better control, especially in that Y axis, is uh, pretty helpful. So the design of this one is a little bit different just in terms of how the stepper motors are laid out. It still only has one stepper motor for each axis, although they are both positioned kind of in the same spot, so it's a little more symmetric. But the actual stepper motors themselves are bigger, so you're gonna be able to get uh, more torque, more power, and you'll probably be able to run this at a little bit higher speed. And then because this is autofocus, you actually have a motor on the Z axis. So compared to this, where you would actually adjust the focus directly on the laser module, since this thing can go up and down. And then it also has a sensor to see how far you are off the ground. Um, this is a lot easier to get focus. So we're gonna do a few tests here in a minute, but just in general, the final results for all of these type lasers usually are gonna be about the same. You're gonna be able to cut kind of the same stuff as well as engrave the kind of same stuff. And usually the performance is pretty equal across the board, but this is definitely giving you a more reliable unit just from the actual build. So the electronics and the circuit board are all here at the very back. Now, another cool thing about this is not only can you connect it to a computer like normal, but you can also connect it to your phone over Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at the software. So this software isn't the easiest of the ones that I've used, but it definitely gets the job done. So um, you're gonna connect it with whatever uh, com you've got it connected to. And then once it's connected, then you're gonna load in your file. So, and actually right now, you're already seeing kind of an image of what was there before. So if I hit refresh, now you are seeing this orange piece, which I have up there. And so that's one of the nice things is you get that camera look. 
But then I'm gonna load in this file, and then for anything that I do, it always has to be a Baby Yoda. So you don't really have the normal controls where you could just grab it, resize it here. You kind of have to do it a little bit manual. So I'm gonna make this a lot smaller. I'm making it 20. So I'm gonna make it actually bigger. Then you can go through here, do your settings, how you want it to figure out the grayscale. It's got a lot of already preset stuff in here. I'm gonna use just the cardboard setting and now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna come over to transmission and here you have all of your like machine controls. Now you can also do a thing right here, print range. And when I click that, it's gonna switch the power setting to really low. So you can see along there where we're gonna actually engrave this out. So then once we have everything set like we want, we can go ahead and send the G code file. So then it's gonna zero itself out with those limit switches and then the Z axis moves. So that's the big thing and that sensor right there. And with all of these diode lasers, they don't come with any type of enclosure. So you wanna make sure and not look at the laser. And so it comes with some glasses. So I'm gonna put those on right now and I'll put some on for you guys. And then it's pretty much gonna do like all other lasers. I'm gonna go back and forth. You can adjust the speed settings, the power settings to kind of dial everything in. And so this is running at real speed, but I wanted to do this because you can actually see that Z axis, it's not wobbling. Um, that is that autofocus. So this sheet of paper is not totally flat, so it is adjusting in real time. So that is a big feature on this guy that I definitely like that some of the other diode lasers don't have. Cool, and it finished up. And actually the image I brought in was a little bit stretched and I didn't do it at the highest of resolutions, but you can definitely see we've got that image in there. So let's do one more test so you can definitely see how that autofocus is working. All right, so we have this bar set up that is ramped. So you can definitely see how it's rising up and down the entire way. Now I am noticing that the, uh, the gear is turning back and forth a good bit, which is kind of making that jitter. And so I don't know if that's in just how I have it set up, but I don't think you'll really see too much of an effect from that. So there are a few other features with this guy that I haven't had a chance to check out because this was a pre-release version. Um, one is there is an iOS app, so you can import pictures, you can control the machine directly from your phone, which is super handy compared to having it connected up to a computer. So it actually connects over Wi-Fi and you connect your phone with a Wi-Fi hotspot. And then you're able to jump into all the settings. There's also a roller attachment on this guy. So if you want to do any type of cylinder, like a cup that you want to engrave on, um, there's a way to attach it that wasn't included with this unit. So overall thoughts, with this guy. Really, I kind of see this as an upgraded version of a Otor Laser Master Engraver. For the most part, the lasers are about the same, but this is going to add on a camera as well as a little bit more rigid build and thicker belts with linear rails to give you a little bit more stability. Also, the autofocus is really handy, so you're not having to manually focus it. Um, in my test, where I was kind of testing it at an angle, it did seem like it was going up and down a little bit and I was getting some jittering. I'm not sure if that's just a software thing or a setting that I had, but for the most part, I think it's working well, especially if you use the autofocus setting where it just checks the focus right at the very beginning and then it checks it and it goes. That's what it's doing right now. It's great that you have a bunch of different ways that you can connect it, whether it's with a computer or over Wi-Fi with the app. Before we get to the cons for this machine specifically, let's just talk about cons with diode lasers in general. The biggest thing is with safety. One is safety for your eyes and the other is just safety for all of the fumes and the smoke and the ventilation. You always wanna make sure you're using some type of protective glasses because that diode light is not great for you. Unlike CO2 lasers, which you can't really see when they're running, but you do wanna protect so they don't bounce off and hit you. Just looking at that beam, it's gonna not be great for your eyes. So I would definitely suggest having some type of enclosure you can put all the way around. They make those that are gonna protect you for those UV beams. But then also you want a way to contain all the smoke and the fumes and you can extract that. I'm in my garage with a big garage door open. So it's not a huge deal in here for me, but if you guys are inside of a room, you're going to need to think through a way to do that. And then the other thing is just with these in general, you never wanna leave them by themselves running because in the off chance that this sticks and the safety shutoff doesn't turn off and the beam is going the entire time, you can definitely light a fire in anything combustible. So really the only cons with this machine specifically is just that it is a Kickstarter slash Indiegogo project. So sometimes the fulfillment for those guys can take a while. So the team at SparkMaker does have a good track record. They've done a 3D printer in the past and they shipped on that. Um, but this is still kind of in that pre-release stage. Just be careful when you're thinking through it. And then also the price. So you're going to go from like a 200-ish dollar machine that is the Otour Laser Master to over $500 with this guy. So when you're thinking through 
through it. Are these upgrades worth it to you? That's something that you will have to decide. But overall, this thing definitely does what it says it can do. So this could be a pretty good option for you if you're wanting to get into lasers, especially if you're wanting to do any type of engraving. So we have a ton of other laser reviews here on the channel. Actually, I did a big breakdown of all the lasers that are out there right up there, and we'll jump into that video right now. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.